All right. Coming up on this episode of Bro, Do You Even Talk Pinball? We've got an interview with Doug Polka, who's the Pinburg Papa Tournament Director. We're going to talk about his business, Kickback Pinball Cafe, as well as uh, Pinburg Replay FX. We've got news and updates, and we're going to redo a revisitation of Black Knight, Sword of Rage, all that and more coming right up. Double Super Jackpot! <laughs> of pinball podcasting nick lane and kevin manny of buffalo pinball Whoa, boom shakalaka boom shakalaka it's another month it's another bro do you even talk pinball welcome everybody nick how's it going going we're uh what is this we're coming up on a year of being on uh, lockdown so happy anniversary yeah i guess <laughs> a year of trying to figure out how to do this remotely i think we got it down pretty pretty pat now yeah just in time yeah. to you know throw it all in the garbage and hopefully go back to doing it in person Maybe well, someday. When in in the fall? Maybe in the uh, another another year. Maybe you think? Yeah, I'm never gonna <laughs> get my vaccination at this rate. Oh, yeah, we're we're low on the priority list, so it's gonna be a while. But uh, I'm in the meantime, to be low on the priority list it means I'm young and healthy, right? Exactly. It's good. Okay. I get to keep working from home. I'm not gonna argue about that. I like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but in the meantime, we got lots more pinball to talk about. Sort of. <laughs> it was it's a light month in news, but we got some stuff to talk about. We got uh, Doug Polka joining us. Uh, but for, uh, first let's go into, uh, thanking our partners without them. This show would not be possible. Uh, up first, the pin stadium, the premier sponsor of Buffalo pinball, also the premier lighting solution for your pinball machines. Uh, check them out at pinstadium.com. Use coupon code 10, uh, Buffalo to save 10% on your, uh, lighting kits from pin stadium. They got some new stuff coming out that we're going to be able to show you exclusive first coming at you. They're not quite ready to launch yet, but uh, stay tuned to the channel. We'll be able to, to share that with you coming up soon. Double danger, DD pinball.com coupon code Buffalo to save 15% on your pinball swag, shirts, hats, uh, pins, stickers, all sorts of cool stuff like that. The mod couple, the mod couple pinball.com makers of excellent modifications for your pinball machines such as the ones that nick and i have on our pirates of the caribbean check them out when we stream it flip it out pinball flip and out pinball.com that's the letter n flip and out pinball.com if you're looking to buy a brand new pinball machine hit up zach over at flipping out he can hook you up and pinside.com they're uh, our podcast only sponsor uh we partner up with pinside they do a great job uh amazing community over there for uh, all your pinball needs you get together connect talk to your friends about pinball stuff uh, look up the top 100, top 100, undisputed, uh, 100% accurate resource. Everybody always agrees with the number one game on the on the top 100, so check that out. Jersey Jack Pinball, jerseyjackpinball.com, where we love their pinball machines. Nick and I have a number of them each. Uh, the hot new Guns N' Roses pinball machine, uh, it, it's blowing up the charts, so check them out. Pinball EDU, if you're looking to win a pinball machine, our friend Jose runs a uh, pinball raffle. And every month he gives away a brand new Stern pinball machine. Pinballraffle.org is the link. You can go there and uh, support a great cause and uh, do hopefully get yourself a pinball machine. Community Beer Works, communitybeerworks.com, uh, our local uh, beer sponsor. They're, they've got two pinball-related new beers. They have one. Uh, they have a Snozberry beer that they just posted on social media yesterday. Uh, so if you got a Willy Wonka, you can get a Snozberry to go with that. They also have uh, cargo shorts beer because you know you got a pair of cargo shorts in your in your closet. So uh, communitybeerworks.com, they know what's up over there. Um, Tilt Cycle, glad to have uh, Dan back, fellow Pittsburghian. I think that's what you call him down in Pittsburgh uh, 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 with Doug. Uh, makes great art. If you've seen any of our game room tour videos, you've seen the uh, play fields that Nick and I have on our walls. Uh, get them from tiltcycle.com. He does a great job. Comment Pinball if you want to light up your machines. Light up all the inserts, GI, make them look good, uh, like I have on my um, Adams Family and Doctor Who that I've streamed recently. Uh, you can go to cometpinball.com for awesome lighting solutions over there. Pinball Mix, if you want to make your machine sound different, you can go to pinballmix.com, use coupon code BUFFALO to save 10% and get a free Easter egg. 
Uh, so a little little special call out or something like that in your machine. Uh, it takes your music and puts it in your machine, does a custom mix just for you. Check out Pinball Mix. And finally, Titan Pinball. Replace those nasty old broken rubbers on your pinball machines with the Titan Pinball Competition Rings. They come in a, a bunch of different colors. Uh, they, they look great. They maintain well. I just shopped out my Tron. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I have all Titans on my Tron, and they were they were dirty, and all I had to do was wipe them down, and they, they're looking good again. So um, I think that brings us to the uh, conclusion of our sponsors this time. Thank you for everybody for sponsoring the show and to uh, all of you at home for patronizing our good sponsors. That was a good read, Kevin. Thank you. Did I'm good getting job, good at it. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you highlighted the beers from Community Beer Works. <laughs> they, crushing it. They, they're crushing it beer wise. I probably should order some of those because they they're doing they they were doing delivery. I'm guessing they still are, so maybe I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Balser says flawless. So there you go. Thank okay. You, well, you, you. I take a hey, we, we did it. It's yeah, my my radio uh, my radio history coming out. I quit while we're ahead. That's right. All right. That's it. See you guys. All right. All right. <laughs> take it away. Let's, Nick. Let's, let's let's bring Doug on. And bring him into the mix. Uh, so, you know, I gave a little bit of an intro to Doug. Uh, again, Pinberg, Papa Tournament Director, co-owner of uh, Pim- uh, Kickback Pinball Cafe. I mentioned this. Doug was on the show before. Doug came on uh, on the episode a few years ago when we were talking about ending the Buffalo Pinball Open and kind of was there to be a backup in terms of talking about the difficulties of running a tournament and everything. And, you know, I... Doug, I met you maybe in 2011, 2012 at the Pittsburgh Pinball Open. And, and uh, one of the nicest people in the pinball hobby. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen you play a game of pinball. You're always doing stuff for <laughs> pinball so other people can enjoy the hobby and, and have fun, especially as it relates to tournaments. You know, you, you got a business which is promoting pinball. And, you know, honestly, it's it's when I was kind of coming up and, and really getting into the hobby, it's it's people like you when I, I, I like you're leading by example, right? Like giving back and doing stuff and helping other people in the hobby, which has kind of motivated me to uh, to do all this. So so thank you for that, and uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. All right, sweet uh, sweet long hair. It looks like you're ready for the hockey playoffs. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a haircut since uh, last March. So nice. we just. Me and Kevin yes. briefly before the show went on, he went the opposite way that I did. Yeah, I, I got rid of mine. He just <laughs> let it all go. So either way involves not going to a uh, to a hairdresser anymore. So exactly, we're doing it. All right. Well, let let's jump into things. Uh, when 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 did the big announcement drop? Was it December that uh, it, it was announced that Replay FX and, and Pinberg was was coming to a close? Is it was that, in November. November. Um, okay. It was about halfway through November. Seems like a lifetime ago. Um, I knew probably a couple weeks before that, that the decision was made. Um, but the official announcement was like mid November, like November 14th or something, something around there. Okay. All right. So, you know, that, that was anybody who's been able to attend, um, you know, replay FX Pinberg, Pinberg had essentially started in 2011 from the format that we kind of know and love. I know you guys did a, a, a Pinberg in the 2000s but it wasn't as necessarily the same and i've been to i've had the distinction i think there's like 30 some people that have been to all of them it's 2011 and i and i and i celebrate that fact i uh it, it was an incredibly successful thing in terms of interest from pinball players like if there's one tournament that they could play in it was certainly pinberg uh you guys were selling out um a thousand slots for people to play within like a, a minute or two minutes or something ridiculous and it's the kind of thing that i never thought would go away so I'm really curious to kind of give you kind of open forum just to talk about um, what, what happened, what, what the challenges were, how you feel about the whole thing, and, and, and where you're at with that. So, um, boy, where to start? Uh, the, the biggest thing that led to the decision to discontinue replay was obviously the pandemic, right? So not being able to hold a show in 2020, that's that's – the main driver of the replay foundations uh, operating capital is running replay effects. Uh, and as the year began to wear out, because initially we talked about pushing the show to like October and then it looked like, Oh, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> October is not going to be a good month. Uh, and then we talked about pushing it another year, um, which we did. And then it started to look like, well, what's the, what does everything look like if we can't run it? 
in 2021. And it basically came down to if we tried to push ahead and run it in 2021 and had to cancel, um, we wouldn't have had the finances to refund people. We would have gone out owing people money. Um, but the decision was made to, to basically cancel when we did, because if we chose to do it at the end of 2020, then after the sale of the assets, everybody would be made whole. We wouldn't leave anybody holding the bag, which I know in the pinball community, there's there's a lot of sensitivity towards people not getting something when they put money towards it because it's happened in the past with some with some companies and pre-orders and stuff like that. And we wanted to avoid that because the Replay Foundation isn't dissolving right now. Some people think that it's, it's dissolving. It's not dissolving. It's still going to carry on some of the things we did before. We're just not going to be running physical events for the foreseeable future. Okay. I, um, I guess one of the, when I first heard about that, it, it's obviously understandable how the pandemic has just really screwed with and messed with everything. And, and um, you know, it's a this kind of unforeseeable thing. Why not just uh, have canceled it? Um, maybe scale back on some of, I, I, I understand that some people were employed full time by replay FX, maybe lay off some of those people and lay low for a couple of years, but keep the games in storage somewhere. And then when things get back to normal, kind of ramp up somehow or, or, or come back. So there, the problem is our biggest expense is the storage of the games. Um, the warehouse space that we lease is six figures a year. So to lay low and just absorb rent without any source of income is just it wasn't something that we could do. And a lot of people came forward and were like, well, you should have done a GoFundMe. You should have done this. You should have done that. Um, we did explore those options internally. The biggest problem there was, once again, we didn't want to leave people holding the bag. So we didn't want to do a GoFundMe, raise a bunch of money. We can't hold the show in 2021. And then we're in the same spot again, except that now we have more of people's money and that we're not going to deliver on. Yeah, un understandable. And um. I, I didn't know, obviously I, I couldn't know how much it is to store that many games, right? You have, you have hundreds of games and it can't be easy. I know you guys used to have the, um, the Papa headquarters and there was that building. So it probably was easier in some capacities in, in previous years, but with that headquarters gone, uh, storage becomes more expensive. What uh, you guys have always kind of led the pinball community, uh, what you guys are doing in, in, in Pinburg, uh, in, in Pittsburgh. Um, as leaders of like running tournaments, there's a lot of talent down there in terms of like knowledge, the ability to run like a world class tournament. What's the feeling of the community? Do you um, what do you guys see coming out of Pittsburgh? Do you, do you see something coming back in some capacity? What do you think? So, almost immediately after we made the announcement, I had a lot of local people reach out to me because Pittsburgh is not just a small collection of people running that event. Like literally, we tap hundreds of locals like our league is huge but our league doesn't generally have a lot of representation at pinberg because they're the ones tournament directing they're the ones tding they're the ones helping in various volunteer positions all throughout the show um there's a, there is a great uh, amount of support and i know that in the pittsburgh area there is a group of people looking to further basically what replay was doing and whether that happens under the replay banner or some other banner I do believe that major, major, major pinball competition will be returning to Pittsburgh. That's that's good news. Again, you guys have a lot. It's it's not just it's not just the capital to to do it. It's it's a skill set, right? To run a large scale event, to understand how to run a good pinball tournament, and you guys have that from from the year. So it would be a shame to kind of lose that or have that go to waste. Um, one question that I had is um. I'm drawing a blank. This is, so, this is why I don't do most interviews. Go ahead, Kevin. So it's, uh, why don't you tell us, you know, we reached out to you after it happened. We were like, man, we should get Doug on to talk about this because everybody's, everybody's bummed out. Everybody wants to know what's happening. And, you know, let, let's get him in here and, and, and kind of, you know, get the, get the nitty gritty. And you were just like swamped selling games and uh, you still are. I see you on Facebook all, you know, basically every day there's a new game or two coming up for sale. So what's that experience been like 
having to offload all of these games that you know you spent years and years uh, curating for the for the collection there. Uh, tell us about how that process has been going. Uh, it's been it's it's obviously slowed down because in November everything went up for sale and we were just crushed. Like at one point I was like seven days behind on responding to email requests for games. Um, it's been it's been interesting. Uh, I've never had to move that many games that quick. To this at this point we've sold like six hundred games since November. Um, so it's been moving along. Dealing with people is interesting. Uh, <laughs> Like, uh, I've, I've sold games in the past, but obviously only my own stuff, you know, onesies, twosies here and there, everybody moves games in and out of their collections or whatnot. Um, it's been interesting because it's, you know, it's funny because I've been doing, you know, pinball directing and been in the pinball community for probably about 15 years, maybe a little bit longer at this point. And <laughs> to have people like email me and tell me, I don't know what I'm doing is <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, sure. Uh, that game's nowhere no way it's worth that much so like okay I've been, okay sure don't buy it then. don't buy it then yeah, um, a solution to that yeah <laughs> yeah uh it's it's just interesting too and i always find it funny that um how people have to weigh in on everything even when they're clearly not interested in it <laughs> so what's the what's the biggest group purchase like how many machines have gone all at once since you sold um we sold uh i'm not gonna say who bought it because that's sure yeah that's, know, fine. that's their business mm -hmm. um but we sold a lot of like probably like 60 pins all together to one person um and that was a that was a big sale yeah that's huge awesome all right i'm i'm back for at least for one more question in all terms right. of numbering where <laughs> we i'm can at tag team it, Nick. we can do it all together. right so my understanding has been that, you know, when you're, you're trying to run replay in Pinburg and come up with the cost, right? You want to make it like the cost is a big issue, right? You're, you, you guys aren't exactly making a lot of money or really making money on, on, or we're making money on the event, right? You're just kind of breaking even if, if my understanding is correct. Uh, we were at the point where, so like we knew and the plan all along was when we started replay, like at the beginning, you're just not going to make money. Like sure, it's an sure. investment and you're building for the long term. Um, had the show not been canceled in 2020, we would be getting ready for Pinburg 2021 right now, replay yeah. 2021 right now. It's just that that complete loss of income and then not ha not being sure if you're going to be able to even recover that in 2021 that basically led to the decision to, to stop the events. Okay, so my my uh, I, I was talking to you about this before we went live. Um, my buddy Joe Mann spent a weekend. <laughs> don't ask me why. Figuring out how to how to be able to run a tournament like this, uh, the size of Replay FX in, in Pinburg. And I, his question was, what would the what what would the cost be to per player for a thousand person tournament to make this kind of a sustainable thing or make money f to build money in the bank for years and years to like almost like weather a storm like this? I mean. Uh Pinburg, so if you look at just Pinburg, like let's throw replay out sure, the window, sure. pretend that doesn't exist. Uh, if you just have to run the show, you're in good shape. The problem is all the other costs associated with, like I said, the storage of the games. Right. Um, because if you're going to run something this big, you can't rely on crowdsourcing games because you can't have people bring you games and then you have to worry about, you know, they show up on Thursday, they bring you a game, you got to put it somewhere, you got to make sure it's set up. Uh, Replay also employed three full-time technicians year-round who basically did nothing but work on Pinburg and floor games for us. So there's a cost associated to that. Um, a lot of our staff, while they contribute a lot of volunteer hours, they are paid at the show, at least the Pinburg staff. Those are all paid positions. Um, so there's that cost there. I don't necessarily think that, I mean, the, re the result of us no longer continuing to run the tournament isn't because we didn't charge enough, if that's what the question is. Um, I don't have a dollar figure for what it costs because I don't know a lot of the behind the scenes uh, cost of things. I just don't deal with the financial stuff. But there's there's a whole lot that goes into prepping and running the tournament in terms of like things you would spend money on that you wouldn't even consider that 
as a cost like just looking at him from the outside okay so you got to rent the hall you got to put the games in place and you go right and well there's to get to that point re, you know replay in Pinburg specifically is a year-round thing like when the show would end we get everything brought back to the facility um most of us would take one or two weeks off and then you're right back at it. You know, we're creating the banks for next year. They're already getting moved in position. The techs were already working on the issues we had during the show. You know, I'm having meetings with Aton and Bowen on what we're going to do different, how to get, you know, how to get a project plan in order to make any enhancements we want to make for the following year. So like there's, there's a lot of planning. I don't want to, I don't want to discourage anybody from, trying to run something like this because also remember that Pinburg started as a small tournament. It wasn't a thousand people from day one. Um, it was, I think our first one was a hundred people. Yeah, people. 2011 was like 173 or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like it was a lot more manageable back then. And we've learned a lot through the years of running it on how to kind of streamline the process. Um, it's been fun. And I don't think we've seen the end of large match play tournaments in Pittsburgh. But for now, we have. <laughs> nice. So, so I, I have ahead, another Kevin. question here. Um, so, well, just to piggyback on that, you you guys used to run. So, like, to prepare, the, it's not even just the maintenance of the games. You would uh, have these tournaments leading up to Pinburg, so you could time out how long each bank would play to keep yeah. everything moving on schedule. So, it's like there's so much planning in. Uh, the overall logistics of this tournament. Talk to us a little bit about that for the people who might not understand that. Yeah, once we once we decide how the banks are going to be set up, we then you know start doing play testing sessions, and those generally ran from February through about two weeks before the show, so February to late July. Uh, and what those were is we would basically have all the games broken up into banks, and we would have people come in and basically play a small strikes tournament four player games so that we could keep the times that, that the individual games were running on um, and kind of put all that information together and get an idea of what, how long a bank's going to take. Cause timing is important in Pinburg. If you go, go over on rounds, then it's just not a good thing. So we would do a lot of play testing and we would run two sessions a week for five months um, so there's a lot of time invested in that. And of course, as they're playing stuff, they're breaking it. So then you got to fix it, uh, again. Um, yeah, that was something we started, I think when we went to 400 people, because before that it was just basically the people that worked there would play the games. The timing wasn't as tight back then. Cause if, if you remember, we used to only have one group per four games. And now we were at the point where we were running three groups per four games. So like before it didn't matter if you really had one long playing game, as long as the other three were quick, it, everybody would still get through it. But now when you have one long playing game, you could be backing up everything, the other three groups that are waiting on that game. So yeah, the play testing was a, was a big part of it and a, a huge time suck. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. It's, it's really mind boggling when you think about all of the, all, all the, the, the big picture stuff you have to think about. It's not just like, do the games work and do we have players? There's there's a lot beyond that. I miss uh, just having to worry about do the games work. <laughs> <laughs> we got, a, a, I think, a, a pretty good question in chat from Pinball Profile. Would it have been easier or harder to run more than one a year? Easier financially, harder for people to run? That's the question. Uh, so we had thought, I mean, we discussed a bunch of things. Um, you know, in the past to try and get more people into the tournament, number one. Uh, running more than one a year would be very, very, very difficult. Because even, like, I was basically in charge of everything that happened with Pemberg. I wasn't a full-time employee for the Replay Foundation, and I volunteered a lot of hours to get things done as it was. Doing more than one a year, you're also asking a lot of your volunteer pool, Um to you know because a lot of us like me included uh, with my regular job i take two weeks of vacation for replay every year is what i would do so at that point you're asking me to burn all my vacation to go run a pinball tournament um i i'm not sure it would be feasible from the manpower standpoint like i think the demand would be there and i think we would sell it out i don't think that would be a problem i think your difficulty would come with can we staff it so did you have plans to expand beyond 
a thousand was there a roadmap ahead like by yeah, like, so, 2023 so I, we want to get to 1500 or something like that yeah i have um i keep internally for myself a three-year roadmap for pinberg um we had discussed some possibilities to increase the number of players uh there were a couple various scenarios so at some point you run into the issue of games number one um and we were kind of maxed out as far as that went but there are other ways to structure things to get more people in there uh it's just how much you want to change the core of the tournament like uh one of the ideas that was thrown out we never implemented was to do like a a for the qualifying days a group a and a group b basically increase the tournament by two days and you would have group a qualify on day one group b qualify on two then split them into their divisions for two more days and then have the finals on the fifth day uh, with that you could theoretically double the number of people you could have in the tournament but it's a it'd be a little bit of a different experience because you you would only play every other day as opposed to playing every day so we decided not to go against that to go with that because uh, we didn't think the experience would be good for the players because a lot of people want to come and they want to compete for those four days, five days. Uh, and having every other day off, we weren't sure that uh, people would appreciate that because they'd have to extend the time that they're in Pittsburgh, which is, you know, cost that they're away from their job and that's cost for a hotel room or whatever. And we, we never went with that one. Yeah. It's interesting to hear the, the other possible scenarios that, that could have been, right? Um, so thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, so we're on, a, we're on limited time with Doug, so we want to shift gears. Uh, unless, Kevin, you have any other questions. Uh, nope, talk a little fine. bit about the uh, Kickback Pinball Cafe. So, Doug, for those who don't know, what is Kickback Pinball Cafe? So it is a coffee shop slash pinball arcade located on Butler Street in Pittsburgh in the Lawrenceville section of Pittsburgh. Um, me and my co-owners took it over a few years ago. Uh, the owner that was running it um, basically had to step down. So she sold us the business and uh, it, everything was going great. <laughs> uh, obviously pandemics, arcades and stuff are hurting. We've had to close for a lot of 2020. We weren't allowed to have people in our building. Um, we're back to being open, um, responsibly open, following all the rules and we're committed to another year in our current space and we're going to see how it goes once uh hopefully people people are allowed to come out and you know feel safe of coming out and playing again well i'd like to make um one of my my first stops when I get vaccinated things get back to normal coming down to show you guys some love because i'm uh, uh pittsburgh's only three and a half hours away from us and uh we love you guys down there it's, it's such a great group of people kick back uh pinball cafe is a such a, a great place. I, I love the the art on the floor and everything. And you got you guys get it. Your pinball people. It's such a cool space. It's a really unique space. Uh, actually, one of the things that uh, one of our local players posted on our local Facebook wall, which if if you haven't done that and you have the means to, um, when the refunds were going out for replay, one of the suggestions they made was find whatever your local pinball hangout is and buy, take your take your Pinberg money. If, if you have the ability to, you know, if it's if it's extra money for you and go buy a gift card to whatever your local location is. So if people haven't done that and, you know, they want to think about what could I do with this extra $150, try and keep your local arcades going because a lot of them have been shut down. And I know there's been quite a few big names that have fallen, you know, in the past year. You just see all these announcements going up and it's and it's sad because I think it'll take a while for the for the communities in those areas to recover. You know, not every, not every city is like Portland where there's, you know, I, I'm pretty sure in Portland, they just, you know, have pinball machines sitting on the street that you trip over as you walk around. Um, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication to keep a, a good location that services pinball players working. And I know there's a lot of places out there that focus on pinball and they put the right amount of maintenance in it and they put the right amount of attention so that their players have a good experience. And if you have the means to support them, you know, even if they're not open or even if you you don't want to go out and play, if you can buy a gift card, if you can do anything, I can't encourage people. I mean, I can't really think of anything in the pinball community that would be more impactful right now. You guys used to do the, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, the, the Pittsburgh Pinball Open. Is that something that we'll, we'll see in the future? 
yeah that'll definitely be back uh we got canceled obviously in 2020 um tentatively we're not scheduling anything till 2022 um because at this point i'm not sure that even scheduling events in the fall uh you're going to get the required turnout to make any expenses uh worthwhile so right now it's tentatively scheduled for 2022 awesome what did i I know you guys used to have what you would call it was the clubhouse right you used yeah. to have that, and you had that inspirational uh, writing on the wall because it used to be a gym. <laughs> but you guys closed that, right? Do you have another space like that's like a kind of clubhouse co-op thing going on, or no? So the uh, we called it the the Pittsburgh Pinball Factory because it was in an industrial area of Pittsburgh, and um, that building got bought by a developer to build like really expensive condos. So we we were forced we were forced to leave there. Um, now there's as far as locations in Pittsburgh, you've got kickback going. You've got uh, the Pittsburgh Pinball Dojo, which is in Bellevue, which is kind of an extension of that, of what the clubhouse was. Um, That's John Rapogel and Mm. Jake Holajacek and a couple other locals there. Um, And that's basically, that's a place to develop pinball players and basically caters to the pinball crowd. Um, They've been closed this whole time too. Um, There's uh, another location called Coupe de Ville that's in the Strip District, which is new. And there's another location called Helicon, and those are pretty much the the main places for pinball in the city. All right, great. Um, and then I think last question, unless Kevin has some, I actually have two more questions, but I'm going to ask one that we have in our notes. <laughs> What's next for the Replay Foundation? So, as mentioned, we're not going to continue to run events for the foreseeable future. Um, Bowen recently put out a video, uh, a tutorial, so the tutorials are going to continue. He's found a source to locally film them where he lives which is more cost efficient anyway honestly um we're going to continue to do the things um that we've done in the past so for example like josh sharp emailed me the other day about a rules change so we're still going to weigh in on that kind of stuff um pair network slash replay still funds like the ipdb's hosting that's all done basically through us so they pay for that and if anybody uses joe schober's tournament software um that i believe that's also hosted through pair awesome um i've got one more question for doug and then kevin now I'll, I'll see if you have any questions it's just a a softball question for you at the end uh what has been your favorite pinball machine that's come out in the last year or two last year or two uh i am a big avengers fan right now uh i'm not sure if it's better than jurassic park not sure um but I, I that's been the one that i've gravitated to the most recently when i've been down a kickback thank you all right no further questions for me you're off the, you're off the hook um <laughs> Kev, you got any anything we got one go? from uh, our friend goran uh, of topper talk fame uh he oh, he asks if you had the opportunity to organize a pinberg like event again from scratch what about the overall format would you change uh i think the format's pretty good i mean and i think that's that's kind of been borne out through the fact that we can sell out a thousand person tournament in 30 seconds. Uh, there isn't much I would actually, there probably isn't anything I would change about the format. The format is unique in not just its size, but the way it's played out. I know other people run smaller Pinberg version tournaments. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I, we get suggestions every once in a while to change a little thing here or there. Restrictions are always a big big thing people people want changed but as far as just the way the tournament runs and the general format i probably really wouldn't change anything about it i think i think many of us would echo that sentiment as well because we loved it and this was yeah like for me it was kind of hard to argue when it sells out that quick that like oh well this is a broken system exactly (laughs) exactly yeah obviously people don't want to do this but yeah (laughs) when this announcement came out it was like the one thing that was like for me personally, it's like, oh man, things are not going to be the same once we get out of this. There's that that thing that we all love doing every summer, and uh, if it comes back, it'll be different. It, you know, it, it's definitely not going to be the way it was. So, um, I think I speak for all all the past Pingberg players when we thank you for everything you and the team did down there. It was a great experience for all of us, and uh, you know, we loved it. Hey, we appreciate anybody that's ever come out to one of our events. I always tell people my, my favorite, my highlight of my summer was always standing on that stage at the beginning 
of round one when we had everybody in the audience for the announcements and just look out on a on the sea of people that's standing out there and be like wow this is this is a pinball tournament like <laughs> like yeah, it was yeah. just i don't know it, it just had a different vibe than everything else and uh i i hope that you know and i think it will i think competitive pinball will continue to grow um i think we're gonna see bigger and bigger events it's just a matter of you know the people having the ability to run them because it's not easy and having the financial backing to run it because it can be expensive Doug, man listen man you you uh you and your team gave me a lot of good memories in pinball that i'll never forget and i've made a lot of friendships in the pinball world because of inberg and the papa tournaments that went on so so i can't thank you enough and uh we're all grateful for the long run that you guys had it's it's absolutely amazing what you were able to pull off it was an honor and pleasure having people come to our events. All right. Well, we're gonna let we're gonna let Doug go. So so thanks again for joining us. Thanks for uh, talking about that. I I know it's a it's a bittersweet thing. So uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Good Take talking care. to you, Doug. All right. Uh, with that, why don't we uh, we can head right over into some uh, some pinball news? So let's let's. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a quick call yeah. to action. So um, oh, okay. Uh, we don't do this a lot, but uh, if you're not a subscriber to our Twitch channel, consider doing that. You can subscribe through uh, Twitch or, or Amazon Prime, right, for free mm -hmm. each month. You got to do it automatically each month. Or if you want, don't want to do it that way, uh, you can become a subscriber for $5 a month. Support the good work that Kevin and I do as, as we hustle through the pandemic to bring you quality content. There you go, Kevin. I'm always uh, always doing the selling. You did the sponsors. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do the uh, PBS call to action. See, and I got the, the I got the link in chat. So we're we're doing it all together. Uh, That's look at work. that. God, it's like <laughs> we've been doing this uh, podcast for five years or something. Excellent. All right, you, are we ready for pinball news? Actually, it's our five year anniversary in February, right? Of, of the podcast, I think so. Yeah, I think February 2016 is when we uh, set up a snowball mic that we shared and <laughs> had a junky video. And I have to go back and listen to how terrible that is. It was bad. We were. I at, think uh, had an echo and shit. It was echo. Yeah, because we tried to do two pan, two USB mics, and it wasn't working. And we had my this like plastic patio table that we were sitting at. And it's really we've come a long way. It's it's really stepping it up here. I like uh, RLM asked. There's pinball news. <laughs> <laughs> so we do a once a month podcast you know like we're like jesus what are we gonna talk about you're gonna see there news is in quotes this month so let's get to it okay let's have let's, let's have uh tim uh bring in the news for us here's the tip all right so uh let's start off um uh, you know pinball profile in chat mentioned dave fix so why don't we kick it off with some american pinball news uh and we'll let me uh find my thing here nope not that one this one and we'll go over here and where is it oh this is this is the this is what you sub for kids this is it smooth and seamless all right so we'll go over here to pinball news and there's two two new hire announcements from uh american pinball the first is zofia ryan um she is a mechanical engineer she's going to be their senior mechanical mechanical engineer and you may know her from a number of games that she worked on with barry ausler from the 90s Doctor Who, she did the amazing um, three-level mini uh, time expander mini play field. Excuse me. Uh, she also did the legendary Mist Multiball on Bram Stoker's Dracula. And she did some stuff on uh, Popeye Saves the Earth and Dirty Harry as well. So, uh, But I think I feel like the, the time expander and the, uh, the Mist Multiball are like two, two amazing um, mechs in to toys, if you want to call them, in the history of pinball. Um, so that's a, that's a good hire for American pinball. Um, they're bringing on some solid additions to the team over there as well as, um, uh, I should mention if I didn't, this is, uh, from pinballnews.com. Uh, Jack Hager has joined American pinball as well. He's joining them as the, um, as their art director. So you may know him from art packages like, uh, Star Wars and, uh, Stern Star Wars and, um, Full Throttle, I think, were his two most recent games that he worked on. So um, there's some concept art that he developed. So he did a lot of stuff with Williams and Bally back in the day. He also did a number of uh, arcade video games like NARC and um, I think Revolution X. Uh, Iron like Island, I art concept. Look, yeah, at that. look at that. I like I'd love that game. <laughs> so get it to go next to your Pirates. I don't know why uh, companies like you know just don't go to Fiverr like uh, <laughs> Punny Factory did. 
Don't worry, we're gonna get to Honey Factory. Don't 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 oh, jump the gun. Thank God. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> don't jump the gun, Nick. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, so two two good hires from uh, from American Pinball. I think they're really uh, they're stepping up their game. I think Dave Fix they got him on board, and they're really they're like they went all out crushing with hiring. It. Yeah, he's crushing it. Um, oops, I gotta switch over to my other doc here. So cool. Um, up next, are you ready for a deep root update? Oh my God! Deep Root and Punny Factory. Oh, this man. is what the show's just evolved into when there's nothing to talk about. Well, like, they keep giving us well. stuff to talk about. So, oh God bless them. <laughs> okay, let's do right. this. Are we, we're gonna we're gonna go this over. Why, to... This is my ignorance is bliss. Like I don't pay attention to any of this stuff. We're like, gonna Kevin jump over. Back. That's that's why it's great to uh, to bring this to your attention. Uh, All right, live on go. the podcast. All right, let's go. So, Deep Root uh... Pinball update. This is from uh, this week in Pinball, uh, February eighth. This came out. Uh, it's long. I, we won't. We'll, we'll, this will not be the unabridged version of this. We're gonna. We're gonna pick and choose. But Listen, uh, I'm guessing the T L D R too long didn't read is that they still are making excuses for not shipping games, right? Uh, yes, you nailed it. But okay, <laughs> it's always <laughs> well, better. We could probably go back to a podcast from three years ago when we're <laughs> saying like laughing about the same shit. It's always more uh, interesting to hear it in their own words, I think. I like so, that, yeah. Let, let's kick it off. Dear Raza customer, first, thank you for your business and the decision to buy into an amazing machine we spent years designing to bring out the best of Papadouk's original theme and layout. As I am writing this email, I'm aware of the weight of accountability and filling orders of quality machines as soon as possible. I'm providing the below as a matter of goodwill and transparency, knowing that it will be unfortunately posted online or misreported by podcasts, plural, hey, that's us. Misreported. Uh, misreported. How do you misreport something? That, yeah, right. what, what is there we misreport? Like you didn't ship a game? We how do we mess that up? <laughs> it's gonna be twisted in ways where true civility and rationality go to die. So uh, oh, we're I mean civil. we don't want to let it coming out down. saying that pinball's easy. Yeah, yeah exactly. we're the we're the jerks. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, order. Right. So the so if you didn't remember, this is a uh, uh, they had this open for a limited time window of ordering. So the, you can't order a Raza anymore. So <clears throat> they received orders. You also can't get a Raza anymore. So. Yeah. Orders paid or goodwill for 70 arcade editions and 60 extra editions of Raza. Raza is Retro Atomic Zombie Adventure Land. Uh, for those of you following along at home, we will round up to 100, 160 total Raza games with most of the remaining games available for sale at $8,000 US dollars. Uh, eight thousand U.S. dollars. Excuse me. Starting price for the arcade edition and thirteen thousand U.S. dollars for flat fee for the extra edition. More details on the timing of that later. After all Raza games have sold, we will publish the exact game count. So, um, th the differentiation there is like new orders versus um the goodwill ones are the the games that they were owed from uh, the previous iteration of John Papadouk's company, uh, Zidware. So they're, they're promising to fulfill those orders, which is a good, good thing to do. I like that. But these totals include those orders that were already in. These aren't just new sales of the game. So, um, we're gonna skip past UL uh, licensing. Nobody cares about that. Uh, parts, this is parts of parts is good. You're going to like this. Um, with most vendors going dark for the last two weeks of December and the first week of January, we have orders in for about 70% of the bill of materials. There are three main hiccups. One, long lead times in general and vendors promising one thing before they get their money, then then typo, then quickly changing their tune after getting their money is the most prevalent reason for the delayed orders and parts. They hmm. interpret that. It's everybody else's fault. Yeah. <laughs> not the, theirs. They, they certainly didn't take anybody's money and are not delivering They didn't do product. anything wrong. No, no exactly. Yeah, it's everybody else's fault. <laughs> yeah. They're victims. <laughs> there have been some great vendors who are exceeding expectations and we sincerely appreciate their efforts. The lock bar we designed is more ergonomically usable, so the one that does not uh, jab your hands and give you the stigmata. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Ball> stigmata. <laughs> is more economically usable, is complex with two stamps and lar several welded reinforcements. The complexity of the design has caused a large number of vendors to pass on it with the cost and time frame we needed it. We finally have two vendors that are willing to do small runs. The problem is getting them into their already full production schedule to arrive ASAP. Okay, let me before we go to the next bullet point. Right. You so ready to break that down? Because because they fucking deci decided to redesign the lockdown bar, which nobody asked for. No, this is like not one person is like, can you please redesign the lock bar? This is another excuse why why they they can't ship their game. Okay, great, good move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, go. you, you gotta have go. the pin bar. It's innovation. Uh, you gotta have the pin bar. <laughs> pin bar. Oh man, I, I lost my website. I'm take you back to the website. Uh, Let's keep on misconstruing all this stuff, Kevin. Yeah, exactly. We're we're we're. It's where all this goes to die. When, uh, when, when they when they fold, 
they're gonna blame they're gonna blame anybody who's criticized them. It's gonna be it's gonna be, it's gonna be everybody but podcasters. Them. Podcasters. And it's gonna yeah. be um the weather this month. Po- podcasters it's- and the vendors and the and the, the parts because pinball's easy. Everybody else just fucked it up. Yeah. Oh, do we? Wildcat says we have to go back to UL licensing. All right. <laughs> All oh, right, uh, let's finish on parts. The lighted side panels uh, prototypes we have for our two extra editions had some wear and tear issues uh, with frayed wires and sizing. It has taken the last 60 plus days working with several vendors to redesign them to be more durable and allow for spacing for leg protectors or cup holders, etc. So their lit side panels uh, were failing. So it's two points for at least communicating what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's generally... You know, we'll dissect it. I mean, it's going to happen mm-hmm. because you put it out there. Like that's how life works. You know. Yep. <laughs> but it, at least, at least they're communicating. Okay, exactly. let's go to the part that Wildcat wants us to read. I'm, I, we must have missed something here. All right. Uh, ULCE. We were not able to get our machines scheduled to go into the labs for UL testing or international slash CE testing until two weeks ago. So this was in January then. Uh, so far, I understand that most tests have been passed. I understand they can take up to five weeks to complete testing and receiving reports and certification. We will not be able to release ship any games until those are complete. So another right. three weeks or so, maybe, until they can right. until they even get testing done. But then they still only have 70% of their bill of materials on order. So And, th- and they're, they're like making also, they're like making like 20 games, right? But this is the only game we've ever seen or talked about. Like, Correct. Or even, and still not shipping. <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. Just want to get this all for right. the record. I don't want to misconstrue anything. <laughs> Production. Uh, we we have the first lines ready to go, and we'll proceed in prepping what we can while waiting on parts and certification. There are tiered production stations. The ones that can produce deliverables will start in the next few weeks. I made the decision not to show production lines or illusory and deceptive pictures of parts or lines or cabinets for many reasons. The only thing that matters is you getting your brand new Raza on your doorstep in working condition as soon as possible. That is a picture that will actually mean something. We fully look forward to seeing your media, uh, seeing your delivery pics and unboxing videos posted or tagged uh, to one or more of our social media pages. Hashtag like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, additional streams. People want to see new, more streams and they're not going to do it um, right now. Expectations. Disappointing news may have a bright side. They, we, what's that? They set up. Well, they, they, have, they have a thing about streaming, which caught my eye. Yeah. Uh, they got, oh yeah, they're going to do they, internal they, streaming. They, yeah, they're going to do their streaming themselves because they're so good at doing everything. So they're going to continue to, to go along this path of doing it themselves. They finally got all the cameras for their internal rig. You know how long it is to hit the Amazon button to get streaming cameras, Kevin. <laughs> it takes like one, two days sometimes. It's yeah. tough. I mean, it might be a little delayed now with the pandemic. It might take a full week or so to get your parts, It might but... take, yeah, it might take a full week. It might yeah. take a full whole week. So I got it. We're yeah. good. Yep. Um, uh, we expect to have parts through the... Fr- through the first week of, week of March at this point with the first Raza's leaving mid-March. So they're saying here that the first games are going to be out the door in mid-March. And here we are, uh, February 27th. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Let's hold them, hold them accountable to that, everybody. Uh, the certifications for ULCE should also be done around that time. Well, that may sound disappointing to wait another couple of weeks for games, there's a bright side. Since the run of Raza machines is limited, we should be done much quicker than our anticipated and originally announced time of three and a half to four months. We have had some of you contact us about jumping the line. It doesn't make any sense at this point. You and other customers will be playing Raza sooner than you think. Next communication uh, plans to update customers again by the end of February. They got until tomorrow. Um, Thank you again for your trust in business. We thank you for your patience. We look forward to exceeding expectations and we are grateful for you allowing us a chance to do so. If you have any questions, contact them at whatever this email address is. Uh, contact at Deep Root Pinball if you want to contact them or by visiting the website. Uh, Robert J. Mueller, Esquire. No, he's not an Esquire. But um, yeah, so there's your Deep Root update. Um, stay tuned for the next coming before the end of the month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. What's next? We got Punny Factory. <laughs> not, not to be outdone by Deep Root. It's a, <laughs> it's a They're going to release a game, though. They're going to have a playable game that people could buy before Deep Root. Yeah. So anybody who ships a pin, well, working pinball machine, like, you enter into a category that's way ahead of Deep Root. Like, this is the best part. Like, like if fucking Punny Factory gets in people's hands before Raz or any game from Deep Root, it's just... It's just the cherry on the top, man. I love it. <laughs> Steve wants you to define playable. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, can we can we just take a, a quick little? Did you watch this video? So they're they're doing. A I watched ten, maybe the the first two. Yeah, they did. A, they're doing a ten part series. Uh, this is fucking insane. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta I, just, I gotta show the beginning. All right, let's let's bring uh, it here. Okay, so pinball adventures. I'll read along for the people at home. Join us on our adventure to making the most epic <laughs> pinball games ever. The most, most epic. epic. Are you ready for the most epic pinball games ever? That might be might be an overreach here. That's a little hyperbole, right? Yeah, a they're bit. they're a little they're they're aiming high, which I, I guess I, I can appreciate, but yeah, I can appreciate. Um, yeah. So this is this first one's about the idea, concept, and rules. Uh, so because everybody just, wanted yeah, to learn more about man. this. Yes, uh, there's lots of like '50s TV cuts, and there's like they, they have Don Knotts in the game apparently, Don but Knotts. it's not it's really. Like, Where's so Don Knotts? Fucking up. Well, that's a good voice actor, I guess, for Don Knotts. But then again, I'm not 80 years old, so I wouldn't know. Exactly. All right, here we go. Here's Don Knotts. Let me let me turn him up so you guys can hear him at home a little bit. Hi, folks. Don Knotts here. That was a character that the Punny Factory pinball machine was built around. Well, to be honest, I'm not the real Don Knot. Just another lovable version. But, doggone it, I'm ready to be your guide and show you how the Punny Factory pinball machine was made. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, do you think they got uh, the Don Knotts uh, permission to use Don Knotts in the game here? <laughs> Even if they're That's saying it's not like the right question, one. I even start with like this is how many? What's it, a ten part series? I saw maybe like two that were released, and mm -hmm. I'm just this is an eight minute video. This one, it's just mm -hmm. like the the self love oh, with yeah. this concept and this game, like just doubling, tripling down, like it's just weird. Like it's just uh, it's really fascinating to me. I I, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I do you want to go over the rules? The, the rules are pretty intense. I don't know if you can handle it. All right, I heard you go, go through all uh, rollovers. That would work those? with the occasional yeah, and experienced player. Using the name Pony Factory, Andrew thought it would be a neat idea to have the player spell out the factory name letters Just... and then enter into a press in the middle of the play field to press the pawns back together. Wow, you spell, you hit the stand up targets on the sides of the play field to spell. Uh, Punny factory or whatever it was and then you hit the scoop to uh, release a pun that's really that's this, next level stuff i think what this guy has is called fuck you money you can just make <laughs> this esoteric pinball machine that nobody asked for yeah. and then do a 10 part like self-indulgent series on it like if, if he was if he came out and was like dude i'm just trolling everybody i'd be like you fucking did it <laughs> you did it but he's not he's not it's, it's, real. Yeah, you and uh, Chris the Pinter are on the same page. He says rich people throwing money in the garbage. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we'll go. We'll go back to this a little bit more, and then you can you can enjoy the rest on you your see, own. The pods of the factory were blown apart in the explosion, and now need to be repressed. Now, to many, this may seem like a simple set of rules. However, when you need to get fifty puns back together, and you have pop-up targets that show up or however to block your ball. It's not that simple anymore. You have to do this Andrew 50 also times. Andrew added in several other nifty <laughs> things to the game, including multi-balls, multi -balls. animation, great sound effects, animation and, and sound effects, music. and music. And with all that, sir, you Is have the one, version or excuse my standard? language, <laughs> the game. Wow. Nuts. Don Nuts. Also it's, it's like the eighth time they show a picture of Don Nuts. 150 <laughs> puns. <laughs> 150 puns. <laughs> would never oh have God. the same game twice. I can't. Now that... know who represents I can't. That's the... enough. That's enough. I can't. This is anyway. a law firm that represents Don Nuts and his estate. <laughs> let's, fucking, <laughs> let's fucking send this to them. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just spell 50 times. It'll be fine. Here's it's... the deal. Like, if you want to have somebody sound like Don Knotts, I'm sure that's okay. But you don't say Don Knotts and you don't show his picture over and over again. Exactly. I think that's like, I'm not an attorney, but I'm guessing that's okay. Yeah. I had it, to guess. It's like they, uh, it's like they took, they, they looked at International Rescue on, uh, on Thunderbirds and were like, that's great. How can we really take that <laughs> to the next level? <laughs> <laughs> the consultant on this game was the guy who made Thunderbirds. <laughs> So there you go. There's uh, at least three or four of those videos out there all, all together. So uh, it's currently rocking 18 thumbs up and 13 thumbs down. So not not looking great for pinball. Adventures. I would give it a thumbs up because I want to see more. <laughs> I just want to encourage this guy to just keep on throwing money in the in the garbage. Exactly. It's not a terribly produced video. Like, no, that's the crazy no, thing. Like, no. he's, there's time and money and investment that went into this thing. Yeah, so they did some storyboarding is... for this, for sure. 
They're, they planned it out. They had their really? little like smoke machine go off, like <sighs> the factory's exploding. It's speaking of time, you know, we're gonna get to Topper Talk later, but this is supposed to have a smokestacks topper, so maybe that'll be the best part of the game. Okay, can't wait for that. There you go. Uh, that's your that's your Punny Factory update. Uh, let's get into Multimorphic. I got my P3 behind me over here with Cosmic Kart Racing in there, the playfield in there, uh, for two reasons. One, there is a new Ranger in the Ruins update, uh, which came out. I streamed it. We found a bunch of bugs, and then they fixed it. So there's another update that I'm going to get in there. But the big, the big addition is that there's a new wizard mode in there, which I'm going to have to try to get to. So that'll be cool. I've also gone through and I started documenting what all the different items do. Pretty, pretty cool little game for the for the Cosmic Kart Racing playfield. Uh, another update is that um, Jerry from Multimorphic posted in the P3 owners thread on on Pinside, and there's some, some pretty cool stuff in here. He says. For Heist, um, their most recent release, he says, we're working on a major update that will include this wizard mode, um, which is pretty much an entire second game. Because this wasn't in the original release, we made it fairly difficult to collect all of the characters. So on the current version of the software, it's harder to collect the characters. When the new release is out, we'll make it easier to qualify and break characters out of jail. We're not publicly guessing when the release will be out, but we have a team of people working on it. It will easily be the deepest and most thematically integrated wizard mode ever in pinball. So big, big, big words from Jerry there, but uh, I'm excited to see what he's what he's bringing to it. Uh, the fact that he calls it pretty much an entire second game is cool, and uh, I like the idea of uh, you know the characters being like a, the middle ground, and then something bigger being even after that. So uh, looking forward to what's coming from Heist because I really like that game, and the the fact that they got more coming for it is a uh, is a big win in my book. So. I saw uh sorry I saw a comment in the chat mm -hmm. about Pony Factory. I have to read. Uh, so so Donnie in chat r writes uh they probably know as much about using likenesses and rights laws as they do about pinball. I think that's <laughs> that that sums it up, man. You nailed it. Nicely done. Good job. Good job, Donnie. All right, so that's uh that's it for the multimorphic update. Spooky has a, a a minor update from what I what I was able to scoop over the past month. They uh, via just another pinball podcast. Uh, he did an interview with Scott Denisi. We talked a little bit about the fact that uh, Total Nuclear Annihilation is going to get rerun. Uh, he was calling it TNA 2.0. I don't know if that's an official name or just the, the code name for the new rerun. But uh, along with it is going to be a new code update for everybody. So it's not just going to be for the new games. Uh, it's going to be for all the backwards compatible games. So Scott has been doing a great job keeping that game uh, updated. It's a, it's a passion project of his. And he... He does a great job, and it's, it's a super fun game. So looking forward to seeing what's coming with a new version of TNA. Uh, with JJP, their big news this month was that they announced a $1,000 price increase on Guns N' Roses. Um, thankfully not if you already had your order in. It's only on new orders going forward, but it's on all models of, uh, of Guns N' Roses. I think we jinxed it last month by talking about uh, CERN updating their Prices on Batman and, and Elvira by five hundred dollars, and JJP was like, "Hold my beer, we're gonna go a <laughs> thousand." <laughs> oh, geez. I mean, nobody likes a price increase, but what are you gonna do? I don't, you know. And and we don't know why, right? Because they didn't they didn't say why. Like Stern, when 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 Stern did their price increase, they said it was parts or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they did a very brief uh, update on their yeah. website as a super super qu uh, quick news release. Explaining you know, yeah. it's like demand and parts and stuff like that. I assume and yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, the uh, tariffs on parts coming in. I think that was part of it. Yeah. So you, we can speculate that it's something along those lines for for JJP as well. We also know that demand is off the charts for uh, for GNR. So <laughs> the demand's there. You know, what are you gonna do? Um, nobody likes it, but I mean, it's good for them. I'm I'm, I'm stoked that they have a, a, a hit on their hands, uh, and hopefully they can uh, turn this into. Uh, a more sustainable future for the company for sure um and on the code update front there's uh two pending code updates on the way uh as a, a, a jersey jack pinball insider in the uh in the beta test group i'm currently running a new version of willy wonka that brings scorbit and uh the wi-fi and bluetooth integration that it'll, it'll bring it to a um uh, a release an official release and there's an update in guns and roses coming that um you know there's a number of bug fixes and things like that but the big like rule change is there's a um 
a, a big um, scoring opportunity on the left uh, base ramp. So climbing all the way up to the um, the Duff base ramp, there's some added incentive to to go for that. Uh, there's a couple of bugs in there. There's something right now where like it doesn't give you the opportunity to cash out the songs if in a certain situation. I haven't played it a ton yet, but I've been reading about that in the beta chat, but they're, they're working on that. So ho- hopefully we'll see something next week as far as an official release. Um, but um, good so stuff rolling out there. I got, a, I got a question for you, speaking of GTP yes. code mm-hmm. updates. So um, I had asked about when like the code updates coming for um, Pirates, right? And you said there was an answer in Telegram. I, I forgot to look. Okay. So you know the answer. Are you able to publicly say what what what, what was the response? I think Keith it's, weighed in on that. It's so long ago and so buried in the chat that I don't right. remember what it said. But um, yeah, I I, I would have had to look that up before the uh, show. I won't be able okay, to find it. That's right fine. Now, but, um, that's fine. I, I thought you might know off the top of your head. I just want to know if it's coming. Like if we're if it's still like he gave the affirmative that's on track or something. Yeah, I think I think it was that they're it's still coming, but who Good. knows? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um. We'll get that for you next month. How about that? All right. <laughs> all right. That is that is the end of the avalanche of all news for the month. I know. Jesus was... Christ. We talk more about like Punny Factory and deeper than it. That's all there is, That's to, all there is to talk about. This you know? is, well, at least it's entertaining. All right. Oh, thank uh, you we can them. get to our game room updates. Uh, I've got a few. Um, so a lot, since we were talking about P3, uh, I got more P3 action on the way. I did order a Lexi Lightspeed. Um, so I got that play field coming. So that'll be fun. I'll be able to, to stream that for you guys and uh, add some more value to my, my P3. So I will have three play fields all together, Cosmic Kart Racing, Heist, and Lexi once that gets here. <clears throat> oh, and if you're keeping track at home about how the weather may have influenced the uh, production of games coming out of Texas, such as Deep Root or Multimorphic, uh, I ordered the Lexi play field uh, on, I think, Wednesday. And it shipped out on Thursday. So nice. Um, they're able to keep things running over at Multimorphic. That's all I'm saying. If <laughs> Pending on the next Deep Root update. We'll see, we'll see how things go. Yeah. Um, uh, I gave Tron a bath yesterday for a couple of reasons. The, uh, the disc on the spinning disc in the back, the rubber disc had started coming off. So uh, I pulled that out, put a new one on there. I got, so I got a brand new clear uh, disc on there, which makes the ball do crazy things. And while I had it apart, I gave it a bath. Um, cleaned it off i waxed it i put new treated it to some new balls hmm. so i'm gonna stream that on monday so it should be should be pretty fun pretty it pr- plays pretty fast when you get that new disc in there and wax it so uh tune in for that it will probably not be a uh a uh a sea of simulation or a, a, a portal night but we'll see we'll probably get to see a simulation but i don't know if we'll get to portal with it playing as fast as it does so um tune in and find out um star wars i did a a, oh so if you're looking behind me over here down there there's there's a star wars in my game room which y'all know i'm not a fan of but uh for christmas i got a star wars pinball art puzzle and uh i put that together as a pandemic uh task and uh, i framed it and put it on the wall so stern partnered with a local uh company called buffalo games uh no relation oh no kidding yeah uh, and oh, released... I didn't realize it was Buffalo games that they, that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. And so this came out last year and I was like, that's cool. That'd be fun to do, you know, something to do uh, to kill some time while we're all sitting around at home. So, uh, I did that. And since I spent the time to do it, let's, let's throw it in the game room. Uh, since then, CERN has announced a couple more puzzles. I don't know if you saw that, but they're doing, oh. a, they're doing, a there's a, um, zombie Yeti puzzle. And there's one with this like feudal Japanese thing. Uh, mm-hmm. they had kind of um teased everybody with like this is our next game release you know it was a pile of puzzle pieces people were trying to figure out what theme it was but it was no it was actually a puzzle that (laughs) they came out with so um if you want pinball puzzles you can stern's got you covered and uh it was fun oh and not not last but not certainly not least when you're talking to nick lane nick i played a vr game this month i i I heard gorn game gorn's got like you on uh alerts he He's like, in. Kevin's playing VR. He came in and lost his mind. I was like, Gordon, I had VR before before you and Nick. Like, it's true. Like, I have VR. I just don't play it's very true. often. That's... I got that uh, the, um, Darth Vader that game. I don't know if you played that one. Darth, I, Darth Vader, Vader Immortal, Immortal yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Pretty fun. I played the first episode. I got two more to go, but 
It's like, yeah. all right, play a little, play a little Vader. I, if, yeah. you, if you give me some lightsabers, like like Beat Saber was cool, and uh, give me that, except the actual like Star Wars universe. Now we're talking. So maybe it's because I played that puzzle. I was like, I, I feel like Star Wars now. El Rocco said, "Get everybody hyped just to disappoint them." Good marketing. Talking about the puzzles. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Stern's good. Yeah. Stern's good. They get you hyped. A fucking a fucking puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's <laughs> that was basically the reaction. I think it was yesterday. Is, they announced the 1920s. They think people are gonna get hyped with puzzles. Listen, no disrespect to the puzzles, but come on. Like when you're teasing like a, a pinball machine, and then you deliver a puzzle. How do you think that's gonna go, Rocco? It's a thousand piece puzzle. I don't know if they they pointed that out in the announcement enough, but thousand pieces. All right. Um. All right, what's your game room updates, Nick? Uh, so I am babysitting a Black Knight sort of Rage Pro. Uh, there was a location that's closing down, and we had to get our games out of there. Not that they were you know, being operated, but they we just had them there kind of in storage, quote-unquote. Um, and instead of going into storage container or a trailer or something or somebody's garage i was like um i'll take it actually kevin i i i messaged you i was like kevin do you want black knight sort of rage and you're like maybe you know so we just don't have it sitting out in the cold and i told martha about that she's like why don't you say we'll take it i was like because we have no place for games oh well, we'll put it in the dining room <laughs> all right I, I, I like what is going on in the, the world i know i'm like Nothing Never matters. thought these things would happen. Like, but sure, yeah, I we can put it in the dining room. I'm totally cool with that. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's a game I've obviously played before. We had on location, but it's nice to play something new because I've not played any uh, any any pinball games other than my immediate collection in the last year. Uh, so that that was nice um, psychologically, I think. And then uh, uh, because it is a stern game in the era of the last three years where they've had the pooling and cracking problem. Of course, this had some pooling on it. And, um, I did a video, which is up on YouTube, uh, about ironing, uh, of the pooling out of it. Uh, this is a fix that comes from Yellowbird, and Yellowbird from Pinside is actually, um, from the mod couple pinball. So if you, if you found that helpful, think Yellowbird, that's his idea. It's not mine. I don't know how to fix shit. Um, <laughs> You could support him with mod couple pinball to, to thank him uh, by some mods but it, it it was i wanted to document doing this that was that was like kind of a, like you know not live but um i i hadn't done it before so we we documented the process and we put it up there so hopefully that's helpful to a lot of people um it worked surprisingly quite well um much better like the the bubble that i w- was working in is much better than it was there's still still a race a little bit but i'm hoping by putting a washer there and uh be so clear vinyl over it and, and um, ironing it down. It helps it. I, some other people were nice and reached out to me because I posted about that issue on pin side and the people who have done this fix have said that it's been holding up. So it's the type of thing where the, the bubble that I fixed was definitely <clears throat> a bubble that would have cracked a matter of time because it's the same kind of bubbling that happened on a metal rail guide as it happened on my Deadpool. I saw other people with uh, Black Knight that had the cracking. So it's like, I might as well try it because I have nothing to lose because I'm just going to be in the same spot anyways. Um, there's some other pooling on the game that's not as bad that I'm not going to kind of mess around with until it gets to the point. I'll monitor it. Um, but it's nice to have this fix. I don't know how permanent it is. It sucks. I don't want to be ironing the play field. You know, there's a cost. Of, like, the iron's like 20 bucks, and you can see what you need to order if you go to that video. Um, then you probably want to get some mylar and there's circles from pin monkey you can buy and what, whatever. There's just a cost associated and also the psychological frustration of having to iron your play field or worry about it. It's funny because, you know, I look at these, these stern, uh, play fields, you know, they started doing the clear coating themselves and like the clear is really thick on it. Like it's, it's, it looks really nice. I think the problem is it's maybe it could be too thick or it's not setting right. But I, I you know, I think in trying to do better clear, they introduce another problem, which is a really bad problem, right? The best play field I have from Stern is um, Walking Dead. I don't think they were doing it in-house at the time. This is 2015. That play field is, is not a thick clear, but you know how sometimes, Kevin, if you see, um, you know, where the ball goes in the ball return in the mm-hmm. drain, like a lot of times the wood's chipping there. I don't know if you've ever looked at it. Like on Iron Man, it gets chipped or whittled down. It's not like you see it. It's not a big deal. It's not on that game at all. Like mm-hmm. that game is just like like perfect terms of holding up so i don't know man it's 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 a bummer the, the problem still exists i had um you know i'm trying to i was asking that thread on pin side if uh 
this issue is going on with Led Zeppelin. I don't think I have uh, heard anything about it yet. It's the type of thing, too, with the pooling and the cracking where you can get a game and it's not going to show up immediately. It's the kind of stuff that could take months to show up. Like the game that I have was made in April 2019, the Black Knight, the one I'm babysitting. And it has a little over a thousand plays on it and it hasn't cracked yet, but it's pooling. So I'm sure when we took it out of the box, it probably looked beautiful and it just starts developing over time. So they're, they're kind of like a ticking time bomb. And it seems like this problem is just on like almost all the games, if not all of them. Uh, somebody else messaged me locally trying to help me out. And he said that uh, Gorilla Biscuits on, on Pinside said that you know, he did this fix and he did that like on eight Stern games or something like that. Wow. Like on all the games he's bought. So I talked to James in Rochester. He's had that problem. So it just seems like it's it's everywhere. So again, hopefully this gives some people some help and, and solace. It's something that we shouldn't have to, to do at all. I, I hope that people don't think that it's okay to keep on producing play fields like this because now we have a fix. As I say in the video, this is not a stern approved fix. So, you know, do this at your own risk. I'm, I'm sure you're violating any kind of warranty if you, if you mess it up or whatever. So it's your choice to do it. We're just showing you what a recommended approach on Pinside is uh, and, you know, hope you find it helpful. We got a uh, we got good feedback on your on your video too. It's uh, entertaining and informative. So if you haven't checked it out, go to the Buffalo Pinball YouTube channel, check it out. Uh, what Nick? I, I gotta say, Nick did a good job, but Martha really stole the show. Her uh, her camera work and commentary really <laughs> took it to the next level. Um, yeah. So it's it's a, this is like you know what it's like living in the house and and with cam. Uh, first of all, her camera work. She likes to zoom in on like the any dolls. Uh -huh. So like I'm working on the pair, and all of a sudden I'm watching the video, and it's going over to the Black Knight doll. And <laughs> that everything. was my favorite part. And Nick's she's like, freaking out. Come over here. Me. Look at this where this rail is, yeah. is touching it. He's like it's it's bubbling up, and then Martha just slow pans over <laughs> to the night and does like a, a a top to bottom view of the of the Black Knight. It's amazing. Yeah, she's freaking out, and and like the. Uh, the video where like I have the heated iron in my hand where you can't necessarily see it on camera, but I'm waving this heated iron around. And like Martha <laughs> knows, like I'm a very like kind of absent minded professor type. Like I'm always in my like head and kind of bumbling around. So she was terrified from the get go. And finally at the end of that kind of like segment, she's like, put it, it's like, put it away. Like you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna burn me. So I, I have to report that Martha was not burned. I think cause uh, we were being watched over by a higher power. So that's right. Uh, yeah. It's it's all good. Tune in for that. Anything else yeah, going I, on in your game room? Um, no, I have like, I, I, I think I messaged you. I have some FOMO going on where it's like, I, I told you I'm taking like one step forward, uh, one step back for hopefully two big steps forward because I, I'm really, really bullish on pinball and I want to expand my collection and your thing. But like, I'm like, man, should I get a uh, Guns N' Roses? Like that will delay some of my plans. I, I don't know. Sounds like, um, you know, they had been having issues early on. It sounds like those were fixed and like, Everyone seems to love the game, so I don't know. Maybe maybe this summer I'll I'll get one. I I don't know. That's my only my only thought there, and that's where I'm at. I had a also um I, I was texted a, a message from a friend to ask on um Q and A for the podcast. This comes from Lisa Koss, and she says, "What game? What game makes me think of Martha?" Uh, so that's an easy one. That's an easy one, Lisa Koss. It's uh it's Dolly Parton because Martha's a Dolly Parton fan. So there you go. We uh, we saw Dolly Parton at uh, our park years ago because Martha likes Dolly. Can we take a survey of chat? Uh, which which game makes you think of Martha? Uh, RLM says what, Bad Girls. That would have been my what pick game, too. What game makes you think of Martha, Kevin? Uh, Bad Girls. Bad it girls? might okay. just be top of mind because of that card she did for the. Oh shit! You should have loaded up that card and we can show it on there. <laughs> I know. I don't yeah. have it. It's on the the Buffalo Pinball uh, Discord and it's it's on yeah. our uh, Facebook page as well. Got her trading card now. Yep. There you go. It's official. Her, her Walter Day trading card. Everybody gets we a trading were, uh, card. We invested early in Bad Girls in 2017, and we, we held all along because I knew it would pay off one day. <laughs> to the moon. You're taking it to the moon. Taking it to the moon. Bad <laughs> Girls to the moon. Okay, by Christmas. Two votes for Bad Girls in chat. Mac Jedi also. Yeah. All right. That's it for my updates. Okay. All right. What, what do we got next? Oh, we got... We're going to... It's not an official review, but given the fact that Nick's been spending uh, some quality time with the Black Knight, they've been getting getting a little more intimate over the past month. Uh, we wanted to go back and revisit Black Knight Sword of Rage and give you uh, an update. Uh, you know, Nick's playing it on current code. Uh, he's had more in-depth time with the game. So, Nick, why don't you take us through uh, Black Knight Sword of Rage, what you've been thinking about, yeah. if you've been enjoying it or not, etc. 
so we, we we did review the game when it came out, mm-hmm. and I think we both gave it like a seven point five, something like that, right, Kev? Yeah, I can go to the All right. I can go to the website here. Um, so I want to do a segment called Black Knight Sword Rage Revisited. Maybe we'll do this for some other games, you know, because code develops and, and 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 things change, or we spend more time on it. And when when we do reviews, you know, there's two approaches. Sometimes we do a hot take when we haven't spent much time on it, and then we'll do a review when we at least played enough games. <clears throat> So I wanted to come back to this because now I have it in the home environment. Um, it's it's easier to dive into the game, to appreciate it when you're not throwing money into it, when you're not in a noisy bar, when you can, can kind of control the environment and, and the lighting on it. So, speak. so I'm going to go down and kind of do um, a revisit review of the game and, and let you know, because I, I, I really like this game. I, I, I like it a lot to the point where I want I think I want this in my collection one day. OK, uh, that's and big like for to, you. I like to share that. And I also think that this game is underrated. I think that it sort of got lost in the mix of other games that came out around time. Because let's face it, Stern has been putting out a lot of good games, you know, in the last several years. So um, it's hard to kind of stand out in the mix sometimes with these things. And I think this game um, didn't get enough credit at the time because I, the, the toy was really cool. But I think it got slapped for having like a barren play field. I want to try to do it justice because I think you can still get this game and I am, I'm definitely recommending it. And I, I call this game like Iron Man 2.0. All right. So especially if you, if you like Iron Man, if you love Iron Man, if you have Iron Man, in your collection and you just, you're a fan of Iron Man pinball. I think this is a game that you shouldn't sleep on. Definitely check it out. I predict that over time, it will be one of those games that comes to be appreciated and I don't think that there's a lot of them out there compared to a lot of other titles that was recently uh, released. So, you know, who knows if they'll ever rerun it? Who knows if the price will shoot up? But that's just that's just my hunch. I remember I compare this to Iron Man 2 because I remember when Iron Man came out, um, it was kind of slept on. It didn't sell much. People kind of didn't get it. They didn't like it. And then once once it kind of got out there, more people played it. They loved it and you couldn't buy it anymore. And that's why they've rerun Iron Man like I, don't know, I think they're up to like three times now or something like that. I can see this having a lot of similarities to it. So let's talk about the gameplay. Um, sim- simply said, it's just fun to shoot. You know, I, I think that Steve Ritchie, look, Steve Ritchie is not just the king of flow, but the king of shots. He knows how to make a shot feel good. He gets it. You can look at the game and say, oh, there, you know, there's not, there's not much stuff on the game, but it doesn't matter. If, if, if the stuff on the game or the shots on the game are fun and feel good, that's what matters more than anything. There can be play fields that are pl- packed with stuff, but the shots suck. They don't feel good. Um, that's not what you want. You just want that. I get a rush playing this game, which is like Iron Man 2.0. This is the first game since Iron Man where I felt kind of that adrenaline rush. Um, I, and I, but I also felt like the game was fighting back. <clears throat> it feels like a battle in Iron Man. It feels like a battle against the Black Knight on Black Knight Sword of Rage. And I really, that's like uh, my type of game, my type of style. He's kind of like these short, these brutal, these kind of like really difficult crushing games. Um, there's not a lot of games like that. You know, like Walking Dead is a game that, that can be brutal, but I don't feel like Walking Dead's fighting back at me. I just want to draw that distinction. This, even this even with does. like all the magnets and stuff like that, I feel like Walking Dead is a real ass kicker, and it's, it's fighting the 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 well walker <laughs> and the and the prison. It'll throw the ballot back at you and kill you. Yeah, you know what? I I I don't I don't find that on there. You would think that, Kevin. So like the well walker, especially on the on the premium, has a magnet. The magnet really doesn't do much. Uh, it's kind of funny. I was saying the other day on the stream, the the magnet of the well walker it might as well not be there. Because it just doesn't, it will grab it when you like start him. It doesn't even like really throw it much. Hmm. Um, you know, yeah, you could say it's dangerous hitting it off of it, but even then it sort of deadens it the way it kind of, um, kind of maybe almost like falls back. So I don't feel like I'm fighting back. And then the magnet in the prison doesn't like fling it or fast or anything like that. It, the worst case scenario, it holds it and drops it down the middle, which is just frustration. So that's a, that's a tough, it could be a short playing game, it could be brutal, but I don't feel like I'm fighting back. Whereas with Black Knight, you miss a shot it's coming like a, a um a fastball down the middle right at you you hit that flail it's flying at you you hit the black knight dead center it's gonna you gotta be ready man um so it's it's definitely way more fighting back than uh walking dead can ever hope to be and and again you can just look at the two games and, and think that walking dead should be that, that feeling but it doesn't give it to me the way uh, iron man or this game does um 
this game has a, a one more game, one more game, one more game thing. When I when I first got it in the house a couple of weeks ago, um, I just like two hours passed like that. I was just addicted to hitting the start and playing again. And I can do it this time. I can get it that time. This, this time kind of feeling, which was is fantastic. Again, Iron Man vibes all the way with it. Uh, let's talk about the lighting. I think the um, I never really appreciated the lighting on it when we first played it. We did a bro show on it. We reviewed it and all that stuff. Um, once I got in the house and like a and was able to control the lighting and, and darken it in the room, it's really good. And I don't know how much the code has changed, but there's moments where I don't know if any other game does this, but the the back box actually fades. The lighting in it will kind of turn off and fade in certain moments. Yeah, Jurassic and Park I, will do that too. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it was just a really nice touch. The the wheels nice. The choreography. I think Tim Sexton like killed. It. I think he's a really he really gets like lighting in a pinball game. Um, very very well done. <clears throat> that was one of the first things he did there. I think right was he did lighting. I can't remember what the first game was, but he did, he worked on a game before Black Knight, and he I think I feel was like Deadpool? he did lighting effects. May, yeah, maybe maybe it was. Yeah, but it just really stands out, right? Like. You know, lighting is, you talk about Guns N' Roses and lighting, I haven't seen it yet. Obviously, it doesn't have that level of lighting, but for what it has in the game, it's just like, you, you, you can tell he knows what he's doing, and there's a lot of thought went into it, and the choreography just works in that game. I think it gave me a migraine the other day when I was, <laughs> when I was playing in the dark, but it, it was worth it. <laughs> worth it. Uh, um, the sound of the music in the game, it, it's it's fantastic. It gets you pumped with that that metal soundtrack. Um they put in an alternative soundtrack. I guess that was a recent, more recent update, mm -hmm. and and I like that. Like the all, you asked me about the alternative soundtrack. When I switch to it, I'm like, it's like almost like a coin toss. I think I appreciate the original one, that the default one, um, but the alternative one works, and it's really nice to have that option. And it's, and it's nice that the alternative soundtrack is not bad, right? So you can switch it up and and kind of just add more variety to the game which is just really cool this is it's like these nice touches in the game that I, I totally appreciate um you know the call outs are amazing i was telling you the other day kevin that this game talks more shit i think than any other pinball game i fucking love it steve ritchie is just it's just hilarious with his, the steve ritchie voice in the black knight i think there's there's gotta be like 10 different ways that he calls you a loser <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking hilarious like he it gets you it gets you fucking pumped and amped and like wanting to fight him you're like loser he's like and they're like oh it calls you like a baby and he makes like baby noises like beep, 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 beep. And, like i just fucking start cracking up like like fuck this guy it, it's it, great it might not be the game for you if you have narcissism issues but if you're okay if you're comfortable yeah. in your own skin then you know enjoy it they it was, nailed it like this game is so mean and so cruel like what's funny is like this game is for pinball people, and you know it is for pinball people because it's the Black Knight theme. Um, it's not for casual people whatsoever. Like this game did not do well in location. It is such a fucking ass kicker. It is so hard. But like if if you're a pinball person, you're you're a player, uh, and you can appreciate the the, the ass kicking you're gonna get and the taunting. Oh my god, this this is the game for that, dude. They nailed it. I, I absolutely love it. And then you got, you know, Ed Robertson doing some call outs. Uh, there is that. Um, I think if you hit like this one shot over and over, he'll keep on saying super features boosted or something <laughs> like that. And I just fucking just laugh. I like maybe they, maybe introduce a little more variety there. But I love like that. Ed did such a great job. I love that he's in the game. Like that's that's super cool. Um, call outs music. Fantastic. I, I love it. There's um, there's some. <sighs> Here's the one downer, and I don't get it. I'm really confused by it. So when you get into the um, night multi ball, it, there's like I guess there's two of them. It goes into like the first one's like the uh, Black Knight One retro mode, so it has like the Black Knight One <clears throat> uh, retro sounds, but it plays the Black Knight UK music, which we all love, right? Mm -hmm, like, yep. you know, I almost bought like the Black Knight 2000 just for that music. It's fucking great. The problem is that I, I don't get it. It's like it's almost like the uh, the music that it is the music from Black Knight 2000, but the the sound quality is almost like a placeholder. Hmm. Like it needs to be fine tuned or something. It sounds muddied. Martha described it as it sounds like they recorded it with a cell phone. Now I, I know it's you know from the 80s, but I've heard you know Black Knight 2000. You can listen to it on, on YouTube. I've heard it because we had a Black Knight 2K on location. That sounds great. I mean, yeah, it sounds like 80s quality, but it's 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 great. There's something there's something wrong with it. It, it needs to be re-engineered or tuned up. Again, I, I can't help but think if it was just like a placeholder and they meant to go back and, and make it sound better. 
but it's really disappointing because when you hear that music, you kind of want to get pumped for it because it's, it's a harder multi-ball to get to. Uh, but when the sound quality is kind of muddied and, and buried or something, what they should have done there is create a pinball moment where that soundtrack is louder than the, um, you know, the, the, the soundtrack for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Just really amp it up, yeah. right? Because it, 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 is, it is a missed opportunity in a moment. And it's the kind of thing it seems like they can go back and fix with, with code. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful they'll listen to, to, to us a little bit. I reached out to Tim. Because I tried to contact him before this because I wanted to ask him some questions. And I want to do this justice because I really like this game. Um, I really want to hype it a little bit because it's still, I think you still get it. I don't want people to miss out on a, on a game, again, especially if you're an Iron Man fan. And unfortunately, he didn't get back to us. So I'm going to do my best to kind of talk through this stuff. But I want to get to the rules. And I think this is where the game still needs some work to get to something really special. And, and by the way, I've not played the, the premium or the LE. Um, I think the Pro is a fantastic game. I can't see how the upper play field helps the game. I think it would just slow it down in my book. And I was talking to James about this from Rochester. James was asking if he were selling that game. Like, no, dude. I was like, if anything, I'm going to buy this game. And um, I guess he used to own a pro. And he's like, the pro's better. And you know James. James would James can buy any game, right? He can buy a premium LE. Though it's not like a budget constraint or something like that. He'll get the game he wants. And I, and I, I think he's got excellent taste in games. So I've heard that from other people. Again, I think that what makes this game special is it, it's such a fast game, man. So uh, the pro's great. Anyways, let's get to the rules. I think the biggest issue for me in the rules is it's just not obvious some of the things that are in the game. It doesn't do a good job communi- communicating to the play field, uh, to, to the player. Um, I'm going to get to the, maybe the biggest thing. I'm going to build up to it. Um, first of all, Rage, to me, doesn't make sense. So the game is called Black Knight Sword of Rage. One of the things in the game is like there's a, a sword that's kind of always on the LCD screen, and you charge it by hitting the drop targets. And once it's charged, you activate it by hitting like a sen- the, the Black Knight shot, and it makes like the modes easier. So that's cool, right? Like, I think you get more points, makes the modes easier. Um, but there's also Rage inserts. So when you roll over the... Um, in lanes it spells rage and it gives you a call out that rage is lit or something like that but that's just lighting a mystery why is rage a mystery yeah it, it's like the same two, mysteries? two 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 uh play field features for the same like name they should have called it something else like you've got the yeah, sword rage it doesn't, it doesn't rage. build it doesn't build up the sword thing right like it just rage is like rage is lit or rage or rage why is it a mystery <laughs> It's know. really weird. It's like it's like there's a disconnect between what's written on the play field and the callouts and the rules. And it's really confusing as you're trying to figure it out. And I'm not I'm not a dummy, right? Like I'm I, I can absorb and digest and understand rules. So that's odd. Um it doesn't really ex- there's like super features in the game, like super spinner, super slings and stuff. Uh it doesn't really s- explain much in terms of them. Like I don't have a concrete idea of how to start the super features. Not obvious how to start the super features. I think I know what shot it is. I don't know what it takes to light the shot or if it's always available to me. So that's kind of weird because super features are kind of important in the game. But the the biggest, craziest thing to me is I, I messaged you. I was like, you're never gonna guess how you collect a super jackpot. Like you're never gonna fucking guess. No. So this is a I guess they I guess him change this recently or he's trying something out with it and i don't necessarily think it's a bad idea but this just goes into like so confusing so what was happening when i was playing is i would see like it would flash on the screen like um super jackpot a hundred thousand and i fucking laughed it was like hundred thousand super jackpot what is going on i didn't think i was in multi-ball or anything i could not figure for, out for the life of me and what's really weird is that in front of the night there's an insert that says super, and you would think that when that's lit, that's a super jackpot. It's not. It's to activate a super feature. So right off the bat, it's just like, it's really like, what the fuck is going on with this, right? The way you collect a super jackpot is activating the magna save and then having, you know, the ball capture, the, the magna save capture the ball and, and rolling over that um, in lane. So that's kind of that's kind of creative. You know, it's there's the intentionality of having to do that. But it's super not. I had to go online and was like, "What the fuck? How am I getting the super jackpot?" <laughs> I, 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 
I think I have an idea of how you build a super jackpot up. I think it's from the super features. But also, it doesn't tell you, like, on Iron Maiden, like, what the uh, value of the Super Jackpot is. You know, on Iron Maiden, you know what the value of the Super Jackpot is, so you can figure out when to cash it out. I don't think it ever says what the value is. So even when you, you're just guessing yeah. when you're going to cash it out. Yeah, it seems like a very unsatisfying way to get, like, a Super Jackpot. Like, I want to do something with the flippers to get the Super Jackpot, not, like, hit the apron button and hope the magnet grabs it. And throws it down the right in lane and not. Yeah, down the lane, I'm not. Know? I'm not convinced that that. I thought that was bad. At, I'm not convinced that that's because I understand that. I think he's trying to have this be an intentionality thing, mm. right? But that's true. Yeah, you you got to have some. You got to have some callouts. You got to have some direction. You got to indicate somehow that it's ready, or maybe it does, or it just gets buried in there, mm-hmm. and it's easy to miss. And you also need to show what the current value of the super jackpot is on the screen. Yeah. I don't know, man. That was, it's just like, this is a really weird game in terms of understanding what the hell is going on. And it's not like a deep game either, yeah. which is, it shouldn't be like that. Um, okay. The pro, uh, the, the pro also feels lacking in multi ball content. The, when I was, when I had this in here, the, I was not getting multi ball, and I, you really got to go for multi ball and stuff. Like, you know how, like, in a lot of games, they'll have like an easily achievable multi ball. For casual players like casual players probably never get to multi-ball in this game which is fine i'm okay with them creating like a game for pinball players like i'm cool with that but what ends up happening in the game is that um you only see the um what i forget what it's called the three night multi-ball where you know the lock is the lock shot you only see that and then maybe you get the one the retro multi-ball and that's it like that's how all my games are i've never even got to the second like retro multi-ball so it feels like the game only has two multi balls in it. Now the premium LE has a catapult multi ball. They have one more oh, multi ball. Right. Yep. But like, why not add catapult multi ball by like you know clearing the drop targets x amount of times? Because it helps casual players start a multi ball, and it also is just like it's a weird, weird that there's like no multi balls in the game kind of feeling. Yeah. So, Especially for a game that's that hard. Like, yeah, it, it would give you an opportunity to play with a little bit of a safety net. If you were able to yeah. play in in control and it's a really hard game. I or I mean I guess another thing that they could do is have one of the modes be like a two ball multi ball like Iron Maiden does, right? Like Yeah. Um but yeah, it's really devoid of multi balls and it just feels like that's a, a, a problem or issue. It's, yeah. it gets it, the game starts to feel a little samey after a while. So would you the the thing I said to you when we were talking about this game is like I I agree I I always enjoyed playing this game when we would go to your location that had it it would be yeah. the game that I played because yeah it was newer and uh, I don't know it's you know like you said it's got um it, it's got that pinball player kind of vibe to it I really appreciated it and it it definitely has that one more game feel because if you, you can get really close to starting the multi ball or like setting yeah. up the multi ball with a mode stack to really kind of get it going um do you see this game being a long-term keeper because to me it feels like more of a fun for a while kind of game or maybe good in a bigger collection kind of game what's your take on that yeah that's that's a really good question kev you know my first game was iron man and for me that was a phenomenal first game because it's 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 so you know it's so dangerous the ball's going to come sometimes games that are, are ass kickers like that where the ball's coming back at you a lot and um be really engaging right and it's you can't just build up the muscle memory because you got to learn to to nudge and do some saving and i think that's what keeps it fresh so for me yes for me it could be like a, even a good first game for me it could be a game in a, in a big collection i think it just depends on if do you like the style of an iron man type of game that's not necessarily deep shorter playing but absolutely brutal in the game and fight you back if yes then you, you need to buy this game um so i want this game in my collection i i, I totally do it has a great place in it I love it. I think it's really good. Um, but if you don't like that style, if you don't like Iron Man, then I don't think you're going to like this game. So what you're saying is pinball, pinball is subjective and everybody likes different things. <laughs> it's weird. How yeah, it's, it's understanding <laughs> what you like in a, in a, in yeah. a game, right? You mm-hmm. know, if like, I think I, I think I did a good job of articulating how this game is and what kind of a player it's going to appeal to. Yeah, no, that's good. It's just funny because yeah, as streamers and stuff, people always come to me and be like, what's your favorite game? And I'm like, I don't really have a favorite game. I have a lot of different 
types of games that I like or a certain style of game. And even though I like it, you probably won't like it. Or yeah. you, maybe you will if you have similar tastes. So there's there's a lot of subjectivity in all of this. And uh, yeah, uh, always keep that in mind s- when we're talking about games. The other thing I would say in the rules, and, and th- I think this is minor, but it, it can help, is that I think in the modes you're you're sort of fighting these bo- bosses, these monsters. Um, you know, ever since Deadpool added in the kind of health bar of who you're fighting, I think it, it would be a welcome addition in this game as well. It, you know, so it will say like three shots left, so it does do a good job of communicating that. But um, maybe a health bar too, because it does feel more like a fight. It's sort of that like connection to what's going on in the game. Yeah, the uh, the album mode for Appetite for Destruction and Guns N' Roses has like a one on one battle like that. Yeah, uh, and you're you're, you're battling <laughs> the two characters that, that were originally in their artwork, the the dirty robot and whatever the other guy is. And uh, I I did it the other day, and I did it without getting hit, and it gave me a flawless victory like Mortal Kombat. I was yeah. like, hell yeah, <laughs> that's really yeah. Good. I like so that. It I makes like... you feel great when it's like, yeah, I kicked his ass, you know. Yeah, when you're fighting a boss, like putting a health bar in there communicates a lot to the player like it you're used to health bars and you're fighting something it makes sense and again deadpool has convinced me that when you have that style mode um you kind of need that now agreed it's it's i think it's with the, the new generation of pinball programmers kind of like bringing the the video game mindset into pinball which i love it personally you know maybe not for everybody but i like it a lot um the lcd i won't say too much i think they did a fantastic job with the lcd you know so yeah, I job. like the LCD on uh, on Black Knight a lot. The animations are really good. Yeah, the toy I think is easily one of the best toys in mm-hmm. pinball. The the Black Knight toy is I fucking love it. It's amazing, well done. Yeah, Even just cool. the, like the detail, like the glowing red eyes and how it flashes and stuff. Um, it just brings so much personality to the game that makes it makes it that battle. And I know Martha likes the uh, the feather in his oh, heart yeah, a lot. Absolutely. She's a fan. <laughs> um, and then Topper, man, I I have never oh, man. would buy a Topper, but I would buy this fucking Topper. This topper is amazing. This topper is the best topper in pinball. And um, I think when the stern released, it was five four ninety nine, dollars mm-hmm. And now it's selling for like 2000 or 3000 on the secondary market. The, that please might stern. be a teaser for Topper Talks. Stay, stay around. Yeah, yeah please, please, Stern, just rerun it. I would almost, I swear to God, I would almost pay $1,000 for that topper. And this is from somebody who does not like toppers. Stern, just rerun it and charge a little bit more, but don't get, don't get too stupid with it. But I think... Here's what you could do on this game. You buy the pro, and then even the you buy the topper, and I think you make out really good with this game if 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 they can even get the topper at a, a quote unquote reasonable price. But Martha made the I think a good observation that if it had the topper on the game on location, we probably made it made a lot more money in this game because people would have seen that topper. It's a fucking amazing. Yeah, that's definitely a topper that would draw people in. I feel like yeah. if you had it on location, though, you'd need to do the, like the the tub on top of it, like the you don't fucking yeah, or like steal try it. to rip it off or I know, screw I know. with it. I love that topper, man. I it's really good. Love it. I do too because it, it's it's going with the Black Knight ta- moving and taunting. Yeah, like it's it's great. I, well, I, I told you it. when I had Jurassic Park, I was like, <laughs> I hope they do a, a Black Knight style topper with like a, a oh, dinos- yeah. dinosaurs up there roaring and doing stuff, and instead it's like flat plastics and some LEDs, and I was like, well, I saved myself. Six hundred dollars or whatever it was. Yeah, I look. I, Stern just rerun it. There's a market for it. People are charging three thousand. You can yep. charge a little bit more. You don't have to gouge your customers. There's there's something about goodwill, especially when there's competition, right? Like, let's not let's not make the market just for the ultra wealthy. Let's mm-hmm. not do that to pinball. You can still make plenty of profit and get it out there. Listen, don't what what the hell do I know? Um, but I uh, I really, really want that. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Brody Even Talk Pinball. But stick around for after after the show. We've got the the highlight of the show, Topper Talk with Gorn. Before that, be sure to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Discord, Buffalo Pinball, on all those things. Um, you can email us, talkpinball at gmail.com, if you've got questions, comments, feedback, and the like. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to us on Twitch to support the show. If you have Amazon Prime, you can use that to subscribe at no extra charge. We would appreciate it. It helps us uh, keep, keep the LED lights on and, and the new pinball machines rolling in for you guys to, to watch us stream. Um, there's a PayPal link if you prefer doing it that way. Uh, if you want to support the show without dropping any money, you know, it's, times are tough. You want to just be able to support the show in another way, you can review us on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, Nick, any closing words? 
No, I'm good, man. Thanks, <laughs> right. for, uh, thanks for thanks for uh, watching us. Thanks for supporting us. And next time. Oh, by the way, you can watch me do my lunchtime football thing on Fridays. If you haven't heard. That's right. I should be able to work home even during the pandemic on Fridays. Uh, that's when, uh, even when the pandemic's over. So I think this is going to be a permanent fixture. Nice. And uh, you got a, a VR golf thing coming up, right? This afternoon? Yeah. All right. If you want to stick around, I'm going to stream. Um, so here, here's the cool thing. Shout out to Brian Dye of West Virginia Pinball. Brian was uh, always kind of helping out and volunteering with, with Pinberg. He has started up a... VR mini golf league. We're in week two right now. He, he first limited it to 16 people. We're like, dude, there's more than that. We have 26 people signed up for this. <laughs> it's a ton. It's like, I think everybody's a pinball person. Um, and we get together and we play VR mini golf and he's keeping track and he's using a, a Pinberg style format for scoring. <laughs> so it's fantastic. I'm going to stream that at two o'clock today. So about an hour and 12 minutes on, on this channel um check it out if you're curious it's it's i I'm, I'm i'm having a blast it's getting my kind of competitive fix but also connecting with um a lot of people that i i, I don't know but are, who are in the pinball community um something along those lines I, I meant to mention this earlier so another like way to connect with the pinball community right now is we have a land party night tonight on cosmic heart racing on the p3 so if you have that game and you want to play with us uh, jump in the Cosmic Heart Racing or in the the P3 owners Discord. Um, uh, I think there's a link to that in the owners thread on Pinside. Uh, jump in there. We uh, we talk trash on the uh, on the voice chat in there. We we coordinate matches. There's an in-game lobby and everything that makes it really easy. Uh, I know we've got at least uh, five or six people lined up for that tonight. So really looking forward to that. Um, some online pinball play, um, head-to-head action during the 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 pandemic is always a good time so uh ways to find ways to stay connected with uh your pinball friends uh as as well as we can until we get back to the the real thing and playing in, in person together so uh, with that let's take you right into topper talk and we will see you guys next month with another another show thanks <music>
you know, the only topper we saw for a while were the tournament play toppers that could be purchased with the uh, tournament kits. Uh, but that's nothing special. Certainly didn't enhance the gameplay experience. But once again, it served the purpose of relaying information or attracting players over to the game. So let's let's continue on here. So then, you know, a couple of years ago, we start to see... Um, modders enter the the pinball business or industry where people could spend money and buy uh, unofficial upgrades for their machines. And this is where pinball started to transition from not only an operator's hobby or an operator's business to a collector's hobby. So, you know, you could buy extra shooter rods, extra lighting, side, side blades. Well, this is where companies like um, Laserific entered the game and started to make their own unofficial toppers that you could put onto the game because if you want to bling out your game. That's a thing that you could do. Here's just a screenshot of some of the toppers on their website. Not too expensive. They're nothing special, but, but they look nice if toppers are your thing. Like, I enjoy toppers. It's a great way to get a topper on your pin. So then, you know, we start to see some new manufacturers enter the, the pinball game that are other than Stern. Um, you know, some uh, manufacturers that maybe are a little bit more premium, like Jersey Jack Pinball, for example, uh, that started to include toppers um, with some of their games at no cost. Uh, uh, you know, you have the 75th anniversary uh, version of Wizard of Oz that has a nice topper on top. Not interactive, nothing special. It's nice to look at. You start to get into the habit of saying the game name twice on the toppers, but it's a thing. It's not bad. Once again, doesn't cost you anything, in my opinion, if you can fit it in your basement or whatever it is. It's nice to look at. We get to the collector's edition where you got, I think, one of the best toppers included, which is the ship in the bottle topper that actually interacts and moves with the game. Um, and once again, no cost. No extra cost. It's already baked into the cost of the game, of course. So then, you know, People are now starting to make toppers. Jersey Jack is is including uh, toppers complimentary. So Stern sees money on the table. They realize that pinball is moving into being a collector's hobby. So we start, you know, we start to see Stern roll out some toppers. I have the Beatles topper, four hundred bucks. It's a little pricey, but it's a collector's hobby. People are willing to pay it. So then. You know, we now start to get into the premium topper business where people like uh, Lior's makes the Hobbit topper that's over $1,000 and and other mod makers as well. Um, and we start to see the prices go up and up for non-factory approved toppers. Well, Stern doesn't want to leave money on, out on the table. So what does Stern do? They start releasing toppers that are really just bad toppers that don't enhance the gameplay experience at all and start charging $1,000 for it. Well... You know, and the truth is, there are people, there are LE buyers in this hobby and CE buyers that will pay that money. And with everything in the pandemic, prices have gone up. So what it, what happens? We now start to see secondhand topper prices go up. 3500 2500 for toppers, which is ridiculous and astronomical. So this is a little bit of how it started, where it's going, and my take on overall topper history and pricing. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Tune into the next podcast to see another episode of Topper Talk with Gorin. And remember, get out there and buy a topper. Thank you for coming to my Topper Talk.